Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you guys how we can make a YouTube thumbnail inside of GIMP, which is basically a free alternative to Photoshop for Windows, Mac, and Linux. So in this video we're going to try to simplify the process down to around 10 minutes if you want a slightly longer form content. I also have a short Skillshare course on the same topic, which I'll link to in the description, so you can check that out if you're interested. So for making a basic thumbnail, we're going to need a background, super important, and we're going to want some text on our image in the form of some keywords that can help tell the viewer about what our video is about inside of a second or two. And in cases like this one, making a thumbnail about how to use GIMP, uh, we'd want to throw on a logo. The same process could also be applied to other images you may want to incorporate into your thumbnail as well. And we'll be throwing some drop shadow on the text for clarity and talking about some finalizing steps such as how to organize everything on the thumbnail to make it look good in terms of the size and positioning. So as for finding a background image to use for your video clip, two great sites are pexels.com and pixabay.com as far as I know. Um, the photos that are on those websites you can use royalty free without attribution. In this video though we're actually just going to extract a background image from a video clip. So if you have exported your video project and you're ready to create your thumbnail then this is the steps you're going to want to follow. So first off you'll want a media player installed that does allow you to take images out of it. So two that I know work for sure are media player classic and VLC media player. So I'm going to open up this clip that we're using as a proxy for the video we actually have edited and we're going to grab a background thumbnail from this. So how you would do this is that you navigate through your video and you try to find a frame that looks really good when it's frozen. And then we extract that and use it as the base for our thumbnail. So I'm just going to go forward here until I find the right fireworks that I want to use for the thumbnail. Uh, that looks pretty good. Here is good. Let's see if there's anything better. So I suppose we'll go with this freeze frame. In Media Player Classic, when you want to grab the image, you can go up to File and Save Image. So we're going to just save this straight to the desktop. And now I can close out our video our edited video quote unquote and i'm going to drag this into our document now my document already has the perfect size for this the thing to note about youtube is that your thumbnails are going to want to be 16 by 9 ratio so an example of that is going to be 1920 pixels by 1080 or if you want to lower it down a bit uh, 1280 pixels by 720 pixels would be equally good so if the background image is too big you can always scale it down or up using the scale tool which you can find right here so if you click on your layer you can scale the corners until you have it the right size you need. But obviously with the background we grabbed from this video clip, it fit perfectly by default. So now that we have that, we're going to want to start thinking about some text that we're going to add to this thumbnail. So it's really important that text on a thumbnail is clear, easy to read, and very visible. So using the text tool, we're going to probably want white text for this background. We're looking at a dark background closer to black than it is to white. So we're going to want white text on top of it in order to contrast that. So I'm gonna left click right around here and then we can start typing our text. Now, something you really wanna think about is that you only have limited space on a thumbnail to actually write text. You don't wanna to write too much text. So if you have a video title in mind, you probably want to half that in terms of how much text you're gonna write on your thumbnail. So if your video title is how to make a thumbnail in YouTube with GIMP, you're probably gonna to wanna to make it more like making thumbnails in GIMP, or you could just make it making thumbnails and drop the word in all together. It's not necessary as long as the words kinda of convey the message of what your video is actually about and make them wanna click on it. So up here at the top, I could say making thumbnails. Now the text here is a little bit big. You'll notice that my default font, Babus Noe, which you can get on defont.com for free, is very large, it's very visible, and it looks good for titles. It's also all caps. I think that generally helps when you're doing thumbnails as well. So this is a good font choice to use. Uh, another one that's pretty good is Big Noodle Titling. You can see that's very similar. The idea is that they're blocky and they're really clean and easy to look at. So it'll be good for a thumbnail. Let's go with Big Noodle Titling this time, actually. So if you need to select all of your text to change the color or to scale it, click somewhere in your text tool and then hit Control A to select all of the text. And now we can either type in a number here or we can use the middle mouse wheel to scroll down and shrink the size of the text. So if you already have a number in mind, like 300, uh, we can type that in. So let's go ahead and type 300 there, hit Enter. And if we wanted to change the position of the text, we could use the move tool. So I'm going to left click out here, hit M or up here in the top left to go to the move tool and then click on our layer that we want to move, in this case, the text layer, and then drag it into the center of the screen. Now for thumbnails, we're probably going to want stuff like the title here to be centered. So a great way to do that is to use guides. 
So to add a guide, we need to go up to the image menu and then go down here to guides towards the bottom and then do new guide by percent. So we're going to want to change the direction from horizontal to vertical so that the line goes from top to bottom. And then we could move the line around left to right, but we don't need to because we want to center everything. So we just need to have the position in percent be 50% across, hit OK. And now this guideline is going to help us to perfectly center stuff like the text layer. So if I left click on the text layer using the move tool, so M to get back to that if you're not already in it, then you'll notice that there's a little cross in the center of it. So when you take this cross to the center of the guide, it's going to snap to it. So when you have it here centered, that's pretty much going to mean that your layer is perfectly centered. Now make sure that there's no extra spaces on the right or left. As long as all of your characters fit nicely into this yellow box that's around the screen, then the centering should be accurate. Delete any extra blank spaces if you have them. So now we're going to want to spend a minute to get a logo onto our image or it could really be any other images you want to include and put on top of this background. So for me, I already have a folder of commonly used logos, which I put on some thumbnails where relevant. So here I already have a copy of the GIMP logo, which I'll drag into our document. The only thing I'd really recommend here is that any images you bring into your document are going to want to be in PNG format or another format that supports transparency. That'll make it so that when you drag it into the document like this, so I'm just left clicking and dragging it from Windows Explorer, that uh, when it's in here, any of the extra space outside of your image is going to be completely transparent, allowing the background to show through properly. So that's really important in most cases. The exception to that would be if your image actually is perfectly rectangular and there is no need for transparency, then a JPEG would be okay. So the next thing I'm going to want to do is scale this down. So I can hit shift S to go into scale mode. And now I can left click on one of these corner boxes in order to shrink it. You might notice over on the options on the left here, I already have around center checked. So that's why when I scale down, it keeps the image centered inside of its original bounds. So it makes it really easy to scale it without moving its position around. So when I get it down to maybe here, I can go ahead and hit scale. And that should be a good size for our GIMP logo. So we can move it into position by using M for the move tool and just drag it to a corner where we want it. In most cases, if I was putting a logo or an image I wanted to make visible, I'd put it in the bottom left or top left corner and sometimes in the center. Um, depends on if this image is more important than the background or not. Let's also slide this text up on the center guide. So we can still move it up as long as it keeps snapped, we're still centered and get it into a better position. We can also add some text down here. So I'm going to use the text tool, swap the foreground color back to white and making sure that the initial color is white. And now we'll click down here. I'll change the font that we're going to use to big noodle titling. If you want to make it a more permanent change, you can change it over here in the text options box. So if I type in big noodle titling, the next time I go to change fonts, it's uh, already going to be using this. That also applies if you change the color here, this will apply to this text box, but the color over here will apply to future ones as well. So let's go ahead and type in the text. So I could say uh, GIMP and I could say 2021 because uh, it's pretty early in the year. So that might be a flashy way to get some attention. So let's go ahead and put that there, hit M and move it into position. I'll have it uh, close to this area here. So you can see we have an extra character there and we're going to want to delete that. So I'll use the text tool, click there a T on the keyboard, click inside our box, hit the backspace, get rid of it. Also, if you want to delete multiple characters at once, you can left click hold and drag it over all of the characters. So you'll see that each character has its own yellow box that goes around it, including the blank spaces. So if you select them all and you hit backspace, you can get rid of them. The reason I'm going to do that here is I think saying GIMP 2021 may be a little much and GIMP honestly doesn't really change all that much from year to year. So let's get rid of that. And you'll notice that this and you'll notice that the text box still has a whole extra line down here, which means that there's an extra blank space down there. So I'm going to left click here and hit backspace one more time and make sure that this box actually fits the text that we're using. Otherwise, when you center it, you may run into some issues. So I'll go back to the move tool. We'll position this roughly in the center here. Position this a little bit to the left. In the case that you want to center both of these at the same time and you want to keep them lined up with each other. So like when we move them, instead of centering like this, where the position in relation to each other is going to change, we can add them to a layer group and move them both at the same time. So in the bottom right hand corner, we have the layers box. If you click here, we can add a layer group and you just drag the layers in that you want to be part of that group. So I'll grab 
the GIMP text and I'll grab the GIMP logo and drop it right on top of the layer group. So now they're both in the group. You can see how they're nested below and to the right. So if we want to move the layer group, you left click on the layer group, making it the active layer. And you'll see a blue dotted line around everything in the layer group, the below layers. And now when you use the move tool, instead of just left clicking and moving, you're going to want to hold shift down to move the active layer. So that toggles pick a layer or guide over to move the active layer. So I hold shift, I left click, and I drag both layers at the same time because we're moving the active layer. If you don't hold shift, this will happen and you'll just go back to moving one layer at a time. All right, so uh, we probably also want to move it down here a little bit. We might also think, you know what, this text is too big, so I can not hold shift and just drag this element individually down here towards the bottom. If we want, we can scale the GIMP logo one more time, make that the active layer, and then I'll left click on it. And now I will scale down just a bit and let's position it there, find out where we want it in relation to the layer group. And of course, you can always go back to the layer group, hold shift down and move it around if you need it. Now, one other thing I love to do with my thumbnails is to add drop shadow to the text, especially in cases like this, where although we may have a dark background, there are some areas where the fireworks are making it really bright. So this S over here on the far right is actually pretty hard to read. And we can get around that using drop shadow. So you left click the text layer that you want to add the drop shadow to. You go up to filters, light and shadow and then drop shadow and you'll see it immediately previewing right there in the background now initially and i can zoom in a little bit to show this um, the base drop shadow effect is a little bit on the weak side it kind of blurs it out and it's not that visible so if you want to remove the blur you can take the blur radius and turn it down to zero that's going to make the shape of the drop shadow actually more of a direct copy of the text characters just hiding behind it. And I think that's easier to read. It makes it more clear than having the blur. And if you want it to be a lot more visible, increase the opacity. So I'm going to take the opacity and turn it way up. And now our drop shadow should be obvious. But I don't generally like it having a 20 pixel offset. So I'm going to take the XY offset here at the top of the options, and I'm going to scale it down to something more like five or 10. So now if we zoom out, we can see that the text characters are easier to read and that the drop shadow is pretty clear, but it's also not too in the way. The focus is still on the white text, the main text. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK here. And now a uh, really quick trick you can use if you want to apply it to the bottom text is just to left click on the bottom text layer and hit control F. So that just applies the last effect with all of the same settings to the active layer. We can even do that to the GIMP logo. So if I hit control F, you'll see now the GIMP logo has drop shadow. So that may actually look better than just having a flat logo. Depends on your personal preference there. All right, so at this point, what I would recommend you do is zoom out on your thumbnail. So hold control down and scroll down on your middle mouse wheel. And then that'll allow you to make the size of the thumbnail closer to what you'll actually see on YouTube. So when you're making thumbnails and when you're finalizing your thumbnail, you really got to think about how your viewers are actually going to see it. And when you're scrolling through YouTube, it gets shrunk down a lot. And that's one of the reasons we need to use huge text. So a font size of 300 on a 1920 by 1080 pixel document is not unreasonable uh, since it's going to be scaled way down when you export it anyway. And because it gets scaled down, that's also why having a 1280 by 720 pixel thumbnail document is fine. It's all getting scaled down anyway. But go ahead, zoom out, look at it. Make sure that everything is where it should be. Can you see the background image clearly, the parts where you actually want to show? So if you can't, one thing you might do is click on the background layer, hit Shift S. And this is one area where having a really high resolution background image might come in handy because then when you scale around, you can still maintain the high quality of the image. But maybe you want to scale this background a bit, hit scale. So I can drag this down if I want to make the thumbnail actually focus more on the fireworks and I don't want the text to block that quite as much. I could also move it up a bit if I wanted to focus more on the cityscape. If your original image is bigger than the document size, then you wouldn't even need to scale it because it would already be bigger. So as long as you stay within the yellow bounds of your background image, you can move it wherever you want and show what you want. And if you play around with it a little bit, you might be able to get the background to look cooler in the final thumbnail than how it looked originally. So also, uh, you probably don't want your text to be too close to the bottom edges, but you may also not want it in the middle if your background image is important. 
if your background image is not relevant or it's just like a back background or something feel free to just throw the text in the middle uh, it kind of depends what you're going for whatever you want to focus on so in this case I'm going to click on the layer group hold shift to make it the active layer again and I'm just going to move this up a little bit so that the top bit is roughly in line with the bottom bit what we could even do to be more precise is to go to image guides new guide by percent and do horizontal and then let's put one at 10 percent yeah let's start with that okay that's too much hit Control z undo that and do new guide by percent and do five percent and then i'll go image guides new guide by percent 95 percent and by doing it this way we can actually keep the text aligned to that guide so i'm just gonna make sure that the white text of the guide goes right on top here and then on the bottom and make sure that our text aligns with that bottom bit i can left click on the gimp logo itself to get it more in line with that as well it doesn't need to be exactly on the point with the logo just adjust it till it looks good basically so at this point i think we have a pretty solid looking thumbnail i can zoom out the text is clear that's important we also have the logo there and we don't have too many words making it confusing about what our video is about this is the this is the tutorial which is about making thumbnails inside of GIMP. so that's the only three words we need so that's about going to wrap it up for this video i've been chris thanks for watching and if you want a few more tips about how to make a thumbnail for youtube or other sites then you can check out my mini skillshare course and you can find the link to that in the description of this video so thanks for watching and i will see you guys in my future video content